When we started working on search, we wanted to do it at scale. This is why we rethought our uh, computational architecture. We designed our data centers from the ground up, and we put a lot of effort in them. Now that we are evolving uh, for this machine learning and AI world, we are rethinking our computational architecture again. We are building what we think of as AI-first data centers. This is why last year we launched the tensor processing units. They are custom hardware for machine learning. They were about 15 to 30 times faster or 30 to 80 times more power efficient than CPUs and GPUs at that time. We use TPUs across all our products. Every time you do a search, every time you speak to Google, in fact, TPUs are what powered AlphaGo in its historic match against Lacerdal. As you know, machine learning has two components. Training, that is how we build a neural net. We, we, you know, training is very computationally intensive and inferences what we do at real time so that when you show it a picture, we recognize whether it's a dog or a cat and so on. Last year's TPU were optimized for inference. Training is computationally very intensive. To give you a sense, each one of our machine translation models takes a training of uh, over 3 billion words for a week on about 100 GPUs. So we've been working hard, and I'm really excited to announce our next generation of TPUs, cloud TPUs, which are optimized for both training and inference. What you see behind me is one cloud TPU board. It has four chips in it, and each board is capable of 180 trillion floating point operations per second. And you know, we have designed it for our data centers so you can easily stack them. You can put 64 of these into one big supercomputer. We call these TPU pods, and each pod is capable of 11.5 petaflops. It is an important advance in technical infrastructure for the AI era. The reason we named it, named it Cloud TPU is because we are bringing it through the Google Cloud Platform. So Cloud TPUs are coming to Google Compute Engine as of today. We want Google Cloud to be the best cloud for machine learning. And so we want to provide our customers with a wide range of hardware, be it CPUs, GPUs, uh, including the great GPUs NVIDIA announced last week, and now cloud TPUs. So this lays the foundation for significant progress. So we are focused on driving the shift and applying AI to solving problems. At Google, we are bringing our AI efforts together under Google.ai. It's a collection of efforts and teams across the company focused on bringing the benefits of AI to everyone. Google.ai will focus on three areas, state-of-the-art research, tools and infrastructure, like TensorFlow and Cloud TPUs, and applied AI. So let me talk a little bit about these areas. Talking about research, we are excited about designing better machine learning models but today, it is really time consuming. It's a painstaking effort of a few engineers and scientists, mainly machine learning PhDs. We want it to be possible for hundreds of thousands of developers to use machine learning. So what better way to do this than getting neural nets to design better neural nets? We call this approach AutoML. It's learning to learn. So the way it works is, we take a set of candidate neural nets, think of these as little baby neural nets, and we actually use a neural net to iterate through them till we arrive at the best neural net. We use a reinforcement learning approach. And it's, the, the results are promising. To do this is computationally hard, but cloud TPUs put it in the realm of possibility. We are already approaching state of the art in standard tasks like CIFAR image recognition. So whenever I spend time with the team and think about neural nets building their own neural nets, it reminds me of one of my favorite movies, Inception. And I tell them, we must go deeper. <laughs> so we are taking all these AI advances and applying them to newer, harder problems. 
across a wide range of disciplines. One such area is healthcare. Last year, I spoke about our work on diabetic retinopathy. It's a preventable cause of blindness. This year, we published our paper in the Journal of American Medical Association, and Verily is working on bringing products to the medical community. Another such area is pathology. Pathology is a very complex area. If you take an area like breast cancer diagnosis, even amongst highly trained pathologists, agreement on some forms of breast cancer can be as low as 48%. That's because each pathologist is reviewing the equivalent of 1,000 10 megapixel images for every case. This is a large data problem, but one which machine learning is uniquely equipped to solve. So we built neural nets to detect cancer spreading to adjacent lymph nodes. It's early days, but our neural nets show a much higher degree of accuracy, 89% compared to previous methods of 73%. There are important caveats. We do have higher false positives, but already giving this in the hands of pathologists, they can improve diagnosis. In general, I think this is a great approach for machine learning, providing tools for people to do what they do better. And we are applying it across even basic sciences. Take biology. We are training neural nets to improve the accuracy of DNA sequencing. Deep variant is a new tool from Google.ai that identifies genetic variants more accurately than state-of-the-art methods. Reducing errors is important applications. We can more accurately identify whether or not a patient has genetic disease and can help with better diagnosis and treatment. We are applying it to chemistry. We are using machine learning to predict the properties of molecules. Today, it takes an incredible amount of computing resources to hunt for new molecules, and we think we can accelerate timelines by orders of magnitude. This opens up possibilities in drug discovery or material sciences. I'm entirely confident one day AI will invent new molecules with, that behave in predefined ways. Not everything we are doing is so profound. You know, we are doing even simple and fun things, like a simple tool which can help people draw. We call this auto draw. Just like today, when you type in Google, we give you suggestions. We can do the same when you're trying to draw. Even I can draw with this thing. <laughs> so it may look like fun and games, but pushing computers to do things like this is what helps them be creative and actually gain knowledge. So we are very excited about progress even in these areas as well.